Hey everyone, it's Joy here. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited that I get to share the Back From The Vault brand new release from Tim Holtz, Distress Paints, and a brand new storage tin. I have made nine cards for you today. I'm gonna show you how we're going to stamp with the paint. We're also gonna make some custom mats with the paint, and it's a lot of fun. So here are the colors that you're gonna get. There's five bundles with four paints in each. This first one is Dried Marigold, Ripe Persimmon, Wild Honey, and Rusty Hinge. Then you have Spun Sugar, Tattered Rose, Festive Berries, and Aged Mahogany. Then the other one is Old Paper, Brushed Corduroy, Gathered Twigs, and Pumice Stone. Then we have a little green collection with Pine Needles, Lucky Clover, Forest Moss, and crushed olive and then finally for our blues and a little bit of purple we have stormy sky tumbled glass blueprint sketch and wilted violet then we have this storage container this is the tin it, it's an interchangeable insert that allows you to store 24 distress reinkers, 20 distress paints or 20 distress mini sprays and you guys can get this as a bundle scrapbook.com right now is shipping all of this out and you can get this at, at uh in a bundle excuse me and i have everything listed and linked for you guys below i'm also using the newer fairly new release from tim holt stampers anonymous this is the bold botanicals and the other one was the floral trim so this is what we're going to be using for our projects today so in my misty i'm going to remove my little foam insert piece and from scrapbook.com I have their uh, sticky mat and I'm going to place this in my misty this is going to help me keep my card panels in place I still will probably use a little bit of a magnet just because you know paint can be sticky and I don't want anything to move I was kind of playing around with how I wanted my bold botanical images to be on my card panels there's four in the stamp set i'm only going to be using three but i decided to center it now i have my silicone mat from scrapbook.com and my first colors that i'm starting with is dried marigold wild honey and rusty hinge i'm using the brayer from tim holtz and I'm, I left this one in. I messed up on my first one. I had too much paint and I rolled too much paint onto my stamp. And so when I peel this back, there's like little globs of paint. It kind of got rid of the detail and the center of this flower. So I did it again. I wiped, cleaned off my stamp set. You just clean it off with water. I gently rolled it that time and it comes out perfect. So when I peel this up and you see it looks so great. So we did an ombre with those three colors. So right now it's dark to light from top to bottom. I'm gonna do a second one because I want two of these and I'm gonna flip it around and it's gonna be from top to bottom, light to dark. So I'm just gently rubbing, rolling my brayer across the stamp and look at that, it turned out so good. I'm cleaning up in between each thing with just some water and some paper towels, it cleans up easy. The next colors are Spun Sugar, Tattered Rose, and Festive Berries. Again, I am doing an ombre effect, but I'm also keeping everything monochromatic. But you could just, you know, imagine the color combinations you can do with all these paints. So I rolled it on here and you'll see that I didn't get enough of the Festive Berries. No, excuse me. This one was just fine. It's the next one. When I roll it out again, I didn't have enough ink on the darkest part, which was the festive berries. So I just added a little bit more, rolled it out, added a little bit more of the um, tattered rose and the spun sugar, rolled that one more time and then gently went across my stamp set or my stamp, gently pressing in the misty. I am not pressing hard because I don't want it to squish out if that makes sense, but look at how pretty that is. And because you're in the misty, you can ink it up and stamp it multiple times. Then I decided with the leftover ink right here that I'm going to make some other backgrounds. So I did that with the orange colors. I redid that off camera, inked it up and dipped my paper in it to get another background. And I will do the same thing with the blue here. This is Stormy Sky, Tumbled Glass and Blueprint Sketch. Actually, Tumbled Glass is the lightest color. And then Stormy Sky and then Blueprint Sketch. 
I didn't have quite enough. So I'm gonna blend that and get a nice good ombre. I've got my third stamp here. Again, this is from the Bold Botanicals. And I'm just gently rolling across, not pressing at all. I'm just letting the weight of the brayer just sit on top of the ink pad. Nope, on top of the stamp. <laughs> and then you get this beautiful image. Let's do that one more time. I'm gonna gently just wipe off the excess paint. And then I can flip the brayer around so that way now I have light to dark. I'm gonna stamp this one more time and then I can dip my cardstock into that ink, which I believe I did off camera, and then we've got some fun backgrounds. Oh no, I'm gonna do it here because I forgot to do it on that one. So let me just ink this up. I opened up that silicone mat. It's large, <laughs> which is really fantastic. And you can see how well this works with the paint and it just cleans off so, so easy. Now I'm not, I don't want this to be super wide because when I lay my cardstock panel on it, I wanna have white areas on the sides. I just want the color going down the center. So I did it with this blue and I also did it with those orange colors. So there's that orange one. I am using the floral trims in my Misty. I made sure that these are dry. These did dry really quick. I actually ended up not working on them, most of them till the next day, but to the touch, they dried really, really fast because the paint is a lot thinner and it just goes on so nice. So I prepped it with a powder tool. I inked it up with Versamark Clear Embossing Ink and then I'm using Ranger Inks Princess Gold Embossing Powder because I love gold embossing powder and I thought this these images would be so pretty on, these, on this colored background. So let's sprinkle that gold embossing powder on and then we can heat that up with the heat tool and I can do that two more times for the other backgrounds. And you guys, this video is a little bit longer, but definitely hang out to the end so you can see how these cards came together. We do a custom matte color, which is a lot of fun and super, super simple, uh, but it really, it really made a difference on these card panels. Okay, so now we have the blue one. I'm picking the different color or excuse me, it's a different stamp. Not, I did pick a different color, but I'm also picking a different stamp. Prepping that, I do have my heat gun on. I do that as soon as I start the process of, of heat embossing, that way it's nice and hot. When I take it to my paper, I'm inking that up with that Versamark Clear Embossing Ink. I like to personally do it a few times. I wanna make sure I've got every area. And I think these, floral trims are really pretty because they have such dainty lines and you have so many flowers and leaves it's just so so pretty so imagine coloring that in that would be gorgeous too i'm going to use the same flower because you get two of these in the floral trim so i'm going to use the same one that i did for the blue onto the red here and i know that that red has like that little open area splotch but i didn't mind it if you don't like that just stick it back in the paint and and gently press down to get more color there but i just kind of like that it was it is what it is uh, because it just, I don't know, it's just that type of project to me. Sprinkling on that embossing powder and then heating that until it's melted. I put both of those aside so I could just heat them together. And I love the gold, but I also did think the white would be really pretty against that, the painted background. So yes, you can heat emboss over the Distress paints if you did not already know that. So let's get those melted. Look at how pretty. Okay, I have decided to tear one of these and the other one I'm gonna trim. So I'm being really careful to tear towards myself because it looks the best when you tear towards yourself the way the paper tears. This is Nina cardstock that I painted on. I am making sure I don't rip into my image. That's why I have my left thumb kind of in the way while my right thumb is pulling it down. But then we have this fun kind of frayed edge which I think is so pretty. And I really was inspired by the edges of these Bold Botanicals stamps. It really kind of reminded me of a torn edge. And then I'm gonna trim with my paper trimmer, leaving a little white frame around, and I'm gonna do that for all of those images. But look at how fun that is. Okay, then those other ones that we heat embossed, I am on the top, well, 
it's on the top, but I actually changed the orientation. So this is gonna be the bottom. I gently tore that too, and I am tearing through embossing powder, and I think it, I mean, it was totally fine. It was not even a big deal. I'm just making sure that it's straight and not super wonky. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I just like that little torn edge. I think it adds a little, I don't know, just a little something extra. It's super, super fun. Now I want to stamp my sentiment. This sentiment is from scrapbook.com's Hello Bloom. Nope, this one, excuse me. This one is from the Happy Birthday stamp. And I'm gonna ink that up with Honeybee Stamps Intense Black Ink. And that says Happy Everything. Then we have this blue one in here. This is also gonna be from the Happy Birthday stamp set from scrapbook.com. You get a lot of great sentiments in here. Just trying to decide which Happy Birthday, because even though this is floral, you could give this to a guy because of the blue. So I wanted the writing to not be so scripty and a little more bold. So I'm centering that on the top and that one says Happy Birthday and then this one says let's eat cake so that one is also from the happy birthday stamp okay these rub-ons uh tr rub on transfers card maker sentiments from scrapbook.com they're so much fun i have not done a rub on in forever i have a drawer full that are so old but i love these gold ones so i'm going to start off with these gold ones you just trim them out with your scissors you take that paper off of the back so the clear part you're going to lay down I'm holding it in place and the little uh, popsicle stick that comes with the rub-on transfers, you just gently rub over the background and you gently remove the top piece and now it's on your cardstock. So I'm doing this on some Nina cardstock, carefully just rubbing. Now I, I do this with the black sentiments too and I will say on the black sentiments you can notice when it's been transferred to the cardstock. I couldn't really notice that with the gold but it wasn't actually a problem. I didn't have any issues. As you can see, it just transferred nicely. So take off that top and then I can bring my paper trimmer in and trim that out. And then we've got some great little sentiments. So again, these are nine cards. And I'm telling you, when you start rolling the paint onto these beautiful stamp sets, um, you're not going to want to quit. So it's going to be really easy. And then with these rub on transfers, how easy is that for your sentiments? I mean, you don't even, even if you stamp something, it's so simple, but these make it even simpler. So it was really, uh, really quick putting these together. Okay, let's make some matching mats. So I am using dried marigold here. I'm just rolling it on. I have my A2 size piece of cardstock. I'm doing two per color. And again, it dries quick because it's super thin, but this is going to match our, our painted stamped images, if that's what you want to call them, <laughs> perfectly. And you guys are going to see how lovely that looks. And when I tell you they dry quick, I mean, I went and had a quick snack. I just made a quick shake, came back and they were dry to the touch and I was able to finish up the card. So super, super easy. I'm gently rubbing my fingers on the back just to get some nice contact with the paper and the paint. And when it dries, your card actually flattens out. It looks a little bowed there, but it flattens out. Okay, I am going to adhere and I'm adhering them in funny places and you're probably wondering why. I'm gonna trim this down to, the, to where these will have a little mat around it. And I wanted to make sure, because they weren't inked or painted perfectly, I wanted to make sure I had a mainly solid color around. I didn't care if it was a little streaky. I kind of liked that look. But as you can see, there was a white, big white area on that little piece on the right. I didn't want that near my edge. So these are having a nice small little mat that totally go because this color is on the front of the stamped image so it totally matches for that monochromatic look and then the next ones with the torn backgrounds i want to see more of this background and i decided to trim it down i actually trimmed it a uh, half an inch on all sides or a quarter, a quarter of an inch on all sides. And so we have a nice good white mat from the card 
base and then we have this colored mat and then we're going to have our images so I'm going to adhere these to the card bases and then I want to add some foam tape I do want these bold botanicals to pop up I think they're stunning and with the paint they just they look like prints they look like painted artwork and I just absolutely love them so I added some foam tape I have my foam sticky strips all of this is from scrapbook.com all the products everything you see that I've used here is from scrapbook.com and I have everything listed and linked for you guys below I'm going to pop these into the center and then adding that foam tape behind my sentiment. I love a lot of extra dimension, but definitely think about that when you're going to mail out your cards. If you don't wanna add a bunch of extra postage, maybe don't pop up the sentiment or don't pop up the uh, bold botanical. But look at how pretty that is. I love, love these rub on transfers. I need to get a whole nother pack of those because those gold ones are so pretty. So let's pop that in place. Okay, let's finish up our other three sentiments. So this one I'm going to stamp. The other two I'm gonna do the rub on transfers. This is from the Hello Bloom stamp set. And I'm stamping that with the black ink. It says sending a happy hello, which I think is fun. And I like pushing the bold botanical up towards the top of that card panel. Again, foam tape for this as well. And what's different about this is that all of the sentiments are going to be at the bottom. I already cut out my other two sentiments from the rub on transfer sheets. And now that I have that centered, I can just get those in place. I don't need the misty for anything like that. So I wanted to stamp that first one and get that out of the way. And let's put these here. So this one says best wishes. And I did find that holding it with my reverse tweezers because I want it up close to that bold botanical image. I needed to use the reverse tweezers to kind of keep my fingers out of the way. Let's do this last one that says, how are you? Gently rubbing that with that popsicle stick that it comes with. And now we've got those sentiments there. Let's add the last of our three cards to their card panels. And then we're gonna finish with a little bit of fun detail. Let's pop those in place and look at that torn edge on the bottom isn't that fun let's finish off with the frozen flurry pops of color and even though it looks super kind of turquoise in the bottle and it's glittery glittery it doesn't really look like that on the background and it goes with all of the backgrounds and i'm just adding a few dots everywhere i would say let these dry overnight before you put them in an envelope to be mailed out. I wanna give a huge shout out, thank you to scrapbook.com for sending me this fun stuff to work with. I am just super excited about that. Remember, this is being shipped out right now from scrapbook.com. Everything I used here, you can find listed and linked below for you guys. Now let's take a look at these. I love that beautiful floral trims images against the distress paint. And then of course we have the bold botanicals. We did that two ways. I loved the neat edge but I will say the torn edge, these, these three are my favorite cards out of the bunch, but you saw how quick and easy it was to make, and I love these. Thank you guys so very much for stopping by and watching. I hope that you feel inspired, and I hope that you enjoyed this project. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.